This video is supported by Neogen. More about them later in the video. Hello and welcome back to the Genomics Bootcamp. This time we will be exploring a new software, well, new on the channel anyway, the Haploview. A few words about the software itself. So Haploview is designed to simplify the process of haplotype analysis by providing a common interface to several tasks relating to such analysis. And there is a list of things Haploview currently supports. And we will be dealing with the first point here, the LD and haplotype block analysis, but it can also do haplotype population frequency estimation, single SNP and haplotype association tests, permutation testing for association significance, and a few other things. In this video, we will talk how to get Haploview, how to import data, and how to visualize the linkage disequilibrium and haplotype blocks. So first of all, if you get to the Haploview website, so this is the main page, and first of all, you want to download the program. And well, I have to tell you that the Broad Institute people did not make it easy for us because, well, basically it's a little bit hidden here to the right side. So there is a download. Of course, there are other things as well that I encourage you to explore, but we will go for a download because what we want is the software itself. So it's a Java file. So you need the Java runtime environment installed. So if you don't have that, you have to do it before, and then you can download the actual Haploview. So there is an installer here, but they also well, suggest that just to go for the Java file. And this is the jar archive is here. But the thing is, so that this is on an FTP server. And well, at least for me, I was clicking here and uh, well, nothing really happened because my browser is not configured correctly. But there is a another kind of a hidden part, no, not really hidden, but you have to look for it. A note on FTP. So if your browser isn't configured to handle FTP, for example, as mine, then you need an FTP client and this link. Now for the FTP client, yeah, well, I use uh, FileZilla. So you can actually download this and it's actually useful for maybe for many other occasions or at least some other occasions, but definitely now. So basically what we want to do is copy this link. So this FTP link. So you see, this is not a common HTTPS, HTTP link, but it is an FTP link. So basically you go to FileZilla, uh, put, paste it in the host and uh, say connect. And well, there is uh, some pop-up here. And we get the Haploview with all the other things uh, here, including the sample file that we will be using. So the sample info and sample pad are the files that we will be visualizing in this video. So here, what you can do is right click here and download, and you can have it in your computer. So as I mentioned, this is a Java file and well, it has also a command line interface we might explore sometime in the future, but today we will be working with the graphical user interface. So point and click, everybody can do and actually provide some really neat overview of the linkage disequilibrium in a visual form. Once we have the Haploview downloaded, we just double click the haploview.jar file and this window opens. As I said, it is a graphical user interface. So there we have buttons and checkboxes and radio, radio buttons. So it's actually pretty straightforward to use. Now, what we want to do first is loading the data. So for this very first occasion, we will load the sample data. We use this linkage format here. So the first one for the sample data, we click browse. And in the Haploview directory, we select sample.ped. We open, actually it autofills the information file, which is actually just the SNP names and positions. In this case, it is a trio data. So we click this association test and the, this is the family trio data. So there is the two parents and the child for a number of families. Of course it can handle other types of data as well. So not you do not need necessarily to have trio data. 
Also, there are some settings here, so you can ignore pairwise comparisons of markers that are more than a certain kilobases apart. So this is set by default to 500. So if you want, you can change it. And also you can ignore individuals with a certain percentage of missing genotypes. So this is set to 50% by default. So you can also change it to your custom settings. As we deal just with the tutorial data here, so we go forward and click OK. And we already loaded the data into Haploview. Now I have to say that there is a user manual for Haploview and actually it's also just below the download button. But the thing is that you need to search quite a bit in it to find uh, what you're looking for. So when we bring up the Haploview itself, so here are the column names and here are the descriptions what each column means. Actually, it gives quite a nice overview about the SNPs themselves, about the genotyping rate, minority frequencies, and other things. Also, it gives a small overview about the data itself. So we will be dealing in this sample set with the 40 trios for 40 families. And basically, we have these 20 SNPs for each. So next up, we can jump right away to visualization. But before we do that, I would like to tell a few words about Neogen. They were kindly supporting this video and they are also great friends of the channel. So a few words about them. Neogen, the company, provides an extensive range of high quality, cost effective and customized genotyping and sequencing solutions and services for a wide range of species. They have an extremely efficient state-of-art laboratory base in Europe offering rapid turnaround times to empower your research-based decision-making. They have also a great variety of products and services. First and foremost, their high-quality array portfolio that provides efficient testing to develop targeted predictions and wide-ranging research opportunities. Their GGP chips combine outstanding design and evenly spaced coverage of the genome with SNP parentage marker and causative content. SNPs with optimal genome coverage, recombination rates, and minor allele frequency representation have been selected for use within these arrays. Some of the most popular arrays include the GGP bovine 100K, so this means 100,000 markers for cattle, and also the GGP ovine 50K, so 50,000 markers for sheep. But of course, there are many more opportunities. Neogen also provides a range of sequencing solutions, which you can see on the screen. Notably, Neogen's SkimSeq technology provides highly accurate SNP variant calls and whole genome sequence data, allowing you to go deeper into a variety of genomes for bovine, porcine, and many more species. If you are looking to future-proof your herd, InfiniSeq provides genomic insight into desired phenotypes with genome-wide sequence data, genetic traits, and parentage markers, so you can maximize breeding prediction and also the value in a quick and affordable way. Also, here I would like to add that actually I'm using these services myself, and just last week I received a badge of SkimSeq genotypes from canine data. So I am thrilled to look into that also more in detail. So we are already at the end of this segment. Well, I just want to emphasize again that the Neogen people are really proper and uh, also very friendly. So, so I am just encouraging you to give them a call or write them an email if you are interested in their services. The Neogen team is certainly ready to assist you with any genotyping or sequencing project that you may have, whether it's really current or you have it just in the planning. Also, you can save some money just by watching Genomics Bootcamp or at, at least this segment because there is a special offer from Neogen for the viewers of Genomics Bootcamp and that is a 10% off your order if you spend thousand pounds or more on genotyping on their GGP arrays. If you want to find out more about this offer, so there is a bit of a description and link down in the description of this video and just follow that one up. And 
when you do, do not forget to include the reference genomics bootcamp into your communication. A member of the Neogen team will be in touch with you to help. So once again, thanks to Neogen for the kind support and we are going back to LD visualization. So here we are back with Haploview and how do we visualize? That is really easy. We just click on the LD plot here and we are already in it. We can also rearrange the window if you, we want, or we can go full screen. And uh, yeah, so basically that is how you visualize the LD in your data. But this is not just a static picture, but you can do a few quite interesting things with it. And uh, first and foremost, basically when you right click on any of these squares, some of the information would pop up. So on the top, there would be the SNP names, their pairwise distance, then the D prime and other statistics. The R squared is actually the, what I, I would consider a classic linkage disequilibrium coefficient. But then there are also the frequencies of the nucleotide pairs. Here you can do a few interesting things also with the display. So if you want to tweak this picture a little bit, so this would be the LD plot. So then there are some other things here that we would deal with some other time. But one thing you can do is you can zoom it. So this is all the zoom version. You can go to medium and uh, well, there is like kind of this thing happens. So as if a graphical problem. So basically you just go left and right and then you are back in and then, then, then you can have an unzoomed version as well. Again, well, it's even smaller. So actually I really prefer the zoomed one. So we are back here. Then uh, what we have is also some color scheme, depending on what you want to visualize. And this time it is the D prime and the lot scores. But then if you want an R squared version, so basically that the heat map actually reflects the R squared values, then you can have it just with a simple click. Also, well, you want to or could show the R squared values in the squares themselves. So it is the show LD values. And again, this time it's a D prime, but you click on the R squared and then now the R squared values are shown. Or if you want a really nice clean plot, then you click none and actually pretty neat without any numbers. I actually quite prefer this one, honestly. Also, there are some color schemes, as I mentioned. So then there could be like confidence bounds, forgamete, and also the gold heat map that is the most colorful version. If you want to know more about this plot, especially the coloring scheme in the manual online, you can also find the LD display page. And this basically gives you information about the colors and which color belongs to which combination. So in the standard color scheme, so you see that if it's a lot score is less than two and the prime is less than one, then it's white and also all for the, all the others. Confidence bounds color scheme. So if there is strong evidence for LD that is dark gray. So basically if we just go back here and do the color scheme and we select confidence bounds, so you see that there are strong evidence of LD based on this table, dark gray. So we want to look at dark gray parts. And actually we have some really neat three haplotype blocks here. So well, I cannot really say that if this last one could be considered a block, but anyway, so that is some haplotype blocks that have some pretty highly linked markers. And then of course there is the R squared color scheme, which is basically the shades of gray, white if it's no LD and black if it's full LD or complete LD with the R squared equals one. So there is a bit of information on this as well. And last but not least, just a pretty neat feature, this LD spacing. So there is a 
scroll bar here. And if you pull it, oops, maybe I pulled a bit too much. But uh, yeah, so you can have also some considerable spaces between the LD blocks. So you click done here and we can put this one actually on the full screen or maybe here we have a bit of more space to do a bit more spacing. Maybe that's too much again, but yes. So there is a pretty neat and representative picture about the region that you want to explore also with easy to do heat map. For now, I would like to end it here. If you are interested in Haploview, well, definitely let me know in the comments. And then I might also follow up with some other uses for the software. And as always, if you like the video, click the like button. If you like the channel, click the subscribe button. And if you would like to personally support the work that is being done on the channel, I invite you to check out the join button below any of the videos, perhaps below this one and become a channel member. About the perks of membership, you can also find information on that by clicking the join button. For today, this is everything. I thank you for your time and I wish you a really nice day.